Welcome to Real Talk and ELT, a podcast that talks about the reality of teaching English. Okay. Uh, welcome back to another episode of Real Talk and ELT. I'm here with Juliana Azevedo. Azevedo? Azevedo. Yes. Okay. I'm getting good at the, the Portuguese <laughs> last names. So welcome. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm honored to be here. Oh my God. This is a pleasure. And of course, we have the egg truck. Is it the egg or something truck going by? So perfect timing for the podcast. We always start when <laughs> there's dogs barking or trucks going by. So uh, let me formally introduce you. Juliana is a lifelong learner, a passionate educator, and a former journalist, which we might get into some of the some of the history there. She specializes in both English language teaching and strategic communication management. She also holds a degree in languages, Portuguese and English, and in social communication and journalism from, uh, is it the Universidade Federal Rio de Janeiro? Is that where yes. you went? Nice. As well as the CELTA. Currently, she is working as a private teacher in partnership with business language schools. So the reason that I really wanted to talk to you um, is because, like we had mentioned, we had been talking before, that you come to teaching from a different perspective. You come from a different background, um, journalism, and uh, especially the strategic communication management. I kind of wanted to dig into that. So how did you get into teaching from journal? Like, what was your transition into English language teaching? Yes, yes. Uh, first and foremost, um, I was 18, yes. So <laughs> we don't know exactly what we were doing, but uh, I had in mind something. Okay, I like to read, I like to write, so maybe journalism could be something interesting. And I thought, okay, teacher, I'll never be a teacher. Yes, they don't learn enough. They have to deal with, you know, manage classes. So I don't want to do that. So I was really like uh, sure about my decision. And I, I passed, yes, I studied journalism. And uh, I worked a little bit, some places, it was nice. But when people used to say, okay, we work a lot, but we have fun, you know? And I used to wonder, I, I don't have fun. What is that? There's no such a thing like fun. I I'm just doing what I have to do. I'm working and that's it. Uh, I didn't have the passion you know, for the, this career. And but something that I have to point out here is that my first job was as an English teacher. Actually, I worked in a language course, like when I was 18, when I finished the course, I worked there. But I, I decided to to yeah invest in my career. And uh, that's OK. I worked with journalism, but, you know, something happened. I was fired. Uh, I was listening to Rodrigo podcast, and he said something about that too. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh uh, yeah, oh, Rodrigo Sigli. Yeah, because he was like, <laughs> yeah, well, I got fired, so then I had to figure yeah, it out. <laughs> yeah, it was an amazing podcast. Uh, and um, yeah, so I, I decided, to, okay, I'm going to work again the language course, maybe to have something temporary, just yeah, in case, and yeah, just to 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 wait for something better. But something happened during this time. Yes, and I I found out. And I realized that okay, this is there's something here that I didn't know, right? And um, some people played important roles in, in my career, yes. And there was a teacher specifically um, that, um, yeah, she's amazing. She's a friend of mine, and she took me by the hand to say, okay, uh, you can do more. Like I know that you're worried about students, and yeah you you care and she invited me to to present like in places congress etc so it was where things started and but this transition was something that i was not planning actually it happened um and i worked a little bit with journalism and but i decided to stop and really uh invest in this uh, education field but i had something in my mind that was like made me like a little bit worried well, I did I waste my time like having these four years, yes, yeah, studying these four years, having this first degree, and I realized that not, uh, yeah, it, it didn't happen actually. And um, I was really like um, longing for finding where and when these two areas would converge. And um, I, I think I'm, I'm still in the process. But with business English, I, I can see the how communication is useful. 
And now I understand, I think, our oh, destiny or something. Uh, yeah, I believe in God. But anyways, um, and I can see that communication plays like a, a vital role in this process. For example, when I'm uh, helping my students with presentations or with job interviews, I was recently with a, a student. She's like a professor, amazing one, applying for a job in the WHO. is a very important international organization. And she was struggling with the job interview because she couldn't see how uh, 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 you know her CV, her profile would be useful, and I was helping her to understand herself and understand how she could like uh, design like a storytelling, as uh, saying how amazing she is. So it's everything about communication, how you organize information, yes, how you you pick things. Um, it's more than the language, yes. What I can see, especially if business English students, it's more than the language. They need to understand themselves, how, how to organize things, like to prioritize information, how to find maybe the the key, yeah, the main information, yeah, instead of, okay, I'm going to talk about everything in my presentation. No, what is important? If you could summarize all the ideas in one sentence, can people like uh, 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 really summarize this and understand the main point of, of your presentation? So these are things that communication could help me figure out as yes, and how, I don't know, to, to be confident there and yeah, speak because not everybody is like extrovert, you know? I'm not, I struggle a lot to, to present. I, I feel nervous, I have stomach ache, diarrhea, everything. <laughs> so I'm not- well, Most people do, right? Yeah. That's not, it's but not uncommon, natural, right? Yeah. 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 And, but you don't need to be, yes, yeah, if you're a person who are like a word about content, you know, how to organize things and to sound interesting and in, yes, and your presentation is engaging. This is like most of the job, I think. Well, I think it's interesting because again, you come from it from a different background. So you, you lo you're looking more at the communication side of it. As language teachers, sometimes we get a little bit of tunnel vision and we're so focused on the, the minutia of the language which is important because it creates the foundation, but sometimes we have to look at it kind of like bird's eye view. So we have to go, you know, macro and micro looking at, okay, so first we have the foundation and, and we have to have proficiency and, and, you know, fluency at certain levels to be able to do these things. But um, as we both work with business, I mean, that's how we know each other from the business yeah. English um, is that, a lot of our clients already have some sort of foundation mm. and what's really important for them is these the, these concepts of communication sto like you said storytelling and being able to kind of wrap um the ideas in a nice little package and, and deliver mm. them to uh, the audiences appropriately knowing what who the audiences are and how it, how to engage with them and, and be able to communicate those ideas so it, it 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 is a little bit of a different perspective because sometimes if we come uh from the traditional roots of education you know sometimes mm -hmm. we get so focused on the language and the minutia we forget about the bigger picture of how these people have to actually function in their in their day-to-day -day lives so interesting perspective. So then um, we had talked about uh, kind of leading up to this, uh, talking about teachers, building teachers confidence in this. And so uh, how, how does that happen? Well, how did it happen for you? How did you become confident enough to be able to say, well, I'm going to start speaking about communication and, and, and that because I think that how did how did you get into that? Yeah, I think it's still a process, right? But I think you should be invested in your CPD. This is, I think, um, the, the secret. I don't know. For example, if you work like for a school and you are like in the system, so you go with the flow and you just do what you have to do. But for example, especially when you work for yourself and you, you, yeah, you are a teacherpreneur or something like that. And I have been working with like uh, online classes since 2017 i think uh, you see this necessity to improve and to invest yeah so for example taking celta for example was a uh, game changer because having another person like giving you feedback yes and you when you expose yourself i think it's awesome to have mentors and to have tutors it's something that i value very very much because normally you're alone but if you have someone to guide you this is like a privilege yeah so this was something that uh, was important for me 
and also, for example, to invest in language. Yes, I'm a non-native. Yeah, and last year I, I took uh, um, a prep course to take my C2 uh, proficiency, which I will take this year actually. In Rio, it's very difficult to find a center. Oh my God, to have the oh, really? based version. Yes, and oh. I'm still struggling with that. Uh, but yeah, and, and I think all these kind of things uh, help to to build confidence and uh, to work with students because. You know, you are not in a traditional way of teaching anymore. You're not like PPP stuff, yeah. You, you, yeah. Students prepare presentation like a more like a TBL stuff or dog me thing. So you have to improvise and work with language too. Because I said communication is important, but language is too important. For example, yeah, yeah of course, it's the balance yeah. of it. And right? for some students, is more than others. Yes, right. For example, have professors and uh, I don't know uh, who um, have to present to to American professors. I don't know, and they are very strict and demanding about yes accuracy, etc. For other people, no, they're just like liaising with uh, peers and yes people in global teams in, in very short presentations so maybe fluency is more important they need only to to um, study more the, the specific vocab so you see you feel each yes students needs but uh, yes I think for, for teachers is a mix of you feel empowered so what, what do I need to work on and you go for it now I'm seeing students struggling with vocabulary and I say oh, I have to read more about it yes I have to resort to theoretical <laughs> Yes, uh, resources again and study. So, and you feel that I have something to say, and it, it, yes, it needs like you see the impact. Uh, everything you do, and you are more prepared to present. But I think rehearse, rehearse is something that is key when you're talking about presentations and confidence. Yeah, for example, I was here thinking before this podcast thinking okay if Kelly asked me that what can I say I don't know how to say this word <laughs> and I, I give this tip to my students okay you're going to talk about I don't know finances you should know this word is key you're not going to struggle with that okay if you don't remember you can resort to uh, techniques like paraphrasing whatever and I think it's that um, to be ready and to 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 study and to rehearse I think it yeah, it's what I do. <laughs> That's actually one of the, like the rehearsal is is one of the influencers of self-efficacy. So it's funny that you mentioned that because <laughs> it's one of these these things that uh, if you study anything of Albert Bandura or self-efficacy, they they talk about some of these influencers on how to boost your self-efficacy and and in in turn your your confidence is boosted. Um, but is that you have uh, time enough to do some sort of imaginary performance where you run through and you do a rehearsal of what you're supposed to be doing. So, <laughs> so it, it, it's funny because it comes from, again, it comes from kind of another, another field. And have you, I don't know, because sometimes I, I do this and I don't know if this has impacted you and helped you at all, um, is looking at courses that are non teacher or English related. So if it's like, for example, if I'm dealing with uh, lots of people, like I've taken um, uh, like agile courses and mm. scrum master courses and things like that, because I needed to really kind of understand what my students were going through. Yeah, uh, not courses, but yes, definitely read about it. I, I was, I took a course, like a short one about storytelling with data because I was really intrigued for example, okay, some students, they have to just explain like the graph, talk about, describe charts, and it's kind of boring, you know, and how can it be interesting? And uh, this course is, uh, was about understanding that there is a story behind every graph and every chart. So you should try to find, yes, this thread. How can you show like a, a human factor behind it? So sometimes I tell my students, okay, I know that you're going to present in the academic field, it can be like boring, etc. But how can it, maybe you can, uh, I don't know, make your slides more interesting, not full of information. How can you show something that connects with reality? So, and this was a course not for teachers, and I think it's interesting, but I've never uh, like took uh, I've not taken something like uh, what you said, but I think it's it's uh, the next thing. I will uh, take this into consideration. <laughs> well, no, not that I like, not that I got like a formal education no, yeah. or anything. But there's a lot of the things online, like edX and Coursera, and and mm -hmm. you know they have lots of those online courses yeah, where I mean. where you can find content about 
something and then it gives us as teachers a little bit of a boost because we kind of know more or less what they're talking about or at least the situations that they're getting themselves into yeah. and so okay. it i mean just being kind of aware of it because if the students have to bring all of the, the information to us which is one of our key resources our business english students are one of like foundational key resources of what's happening in their companies what's happening at work but sometimes they just they can't explain it and so exactly. and they don't have the reference for it they don't have the language for it so it's it's hard for us to try and wrap our heads around it so and like for some reason a couple of years ago it was you know all about implementation of agile into into wow. companies so and i worked with a lot of it people mm -hmm. at that time and and so it made sense to kind of understand yeah, it's a hot what is a scrum master <laughs> and we have a stand-up meetings and how do we do the iterations and all that type of stuff just so i was speaking the same language of them and then i was like okay i feel better because i i know what's yes. going on a little bit mm. yeah as you said you help them to to understand sometimes they don't know where yet you know, to start and yeah for sure I, I like reading a lot i have some nutritionist students <laughs> not from the business area but uh i have to read the articles and uh it's not something that someone said you have to but you have to right so come on <laughs> it's part of well, the job <laughs> it, well like, i mean it goes to it's certainly not part of the job that we have to be experts in everything but it yeah, certainly does make you yeah. feel a little bit more confident in the yeah. classroom saying yeah, like absolutely. oh yes i know something about this <laughs> more or less right yes absolutely yes uh, and this is and this is good i mean you 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 know you broaden your horizons you, you learn from yeah other things and um it's amazing i think it helps to boost our confidence as a person yes who is able to talk about other things other areas so it, it's very exciting yeah I, I, at the same time i talk about nutri nutrition i'm talking about oil and gas i say jesus and, but I, i'm okay now in the beginning i was a little bit afraid of oh my god i don't know deeply these kind of things but it, when you know where to start as you said you know yes the basics and uh you help students and they feel confident to explain things to you yes oh teacher yes could you understand that so yes i'm able to express myself right so it happens too and this is uh, is a win-win situation for teachers and students i, I believe <laughs> did, did you did you ever struggle like in the the beginning when you kind of went into business english did you get into situations where you had students from so many different areas that it just did not work <laughs> and you became overwhelmed because i know that i do have some people that um doing teacher training or mentoring or things like that they've taken on students thinking that they would be able to help them but that their the niche that they worked in was so specific the teacher became overwhelmed because they were so uninformed i guess about yeah. everything that goes into it yeah i was afraid in the beginning especially because some students from accounting and finances area like appeared and it's not like my expertise at all it's not it was not something that i liked now i'm starting to enjoy it but i really try i had time yeah back then so i read i had time to to research a little bit and these students started to you know uh yes um be influenced to bring all the students and I, I started to have a kind of niche so now I, I think like twice when I have to yes to have a new student if it's something very different from that uh, my tendency is to to refuse because I don't know if I'm going to have time yes to really help all of them and sometimes you don't want to yes <laughs> because something is so specific as you said but I, I had to, to research a lot and I still have but I don't know I, I think a long time you as you as you said as we are talking here we become like more confident because we know we are investing things so we don't know one like we don't know a but we know b so we, we we are okay with ourselves so some now i can like open dictionary students and say okay i don't know but let's search together i don't know these but i know how to assess yes and evaluate information i can help you with that so i think yes maturity brings these kind of things in the beginning i was like so afraid of saying i don't know i don't know this word i will, I will die but now it, that's okay i don't know let's see together or maybe i can something more difficult and a specific i can uh, uh yes look up this word after words and that's it and yeah i i think it's 
believing yeah, I think it's that way. I don't know. It is. It's kind of living and learning. I, I've had that similar experience where I've had students, they've come to me and they <laughs> come from God knows, oh God, this the industries, so many different industries. And then they're like, well, I'm trying to say this. And they'll say it to me in English. I'm like, I don't understand that. And then I ask them, can you, because I speak a little Portuguese. So I said, can you try and explain it to me in Portuguese? And maybe I can figure out exactly what you're trying to, to communicate to me right now. And they say it in Portuguese and I'm continue to be lost. And then like, okay, so now it's it's kind of like we become <laughs> like Sherlock Holmes in the in the classroom. Together it's like Sherlock Holmes and, yeah. and Watt, Dr. Watson together in the classroom. And we're trying to figure out so, but I've turned that into kind of a almost like a strength because it's it's something that one is collaborative and mm. and you can um you know, we're, again, we're not expected to know everything, especially I'm not trained in a lot of the industry. So then I'll go out and I'll find three different articles or three different resources. Mm -hmm. And I say, yeah. which one is the scenario that you're trying to explain to me? Because mm -hmm. all these three, they seem similar, but they're different. And, you know, what are we trying to talk about here? What's the explanation? And then it turns into, well, then they have to read and then we look at the vocabulary mm -hmm. and we're trying to compare and contrast, you know, the different types of information. It's like, no, I'm talking about this. I'm like, oh, okay. So then, and then you can extrapolate that, you know, and say, okay, mm -hmm. so this is the, this is the correct way or one way that we found of describing the situation. Does it sound similar or different to what you hear in your company when other people are talking about it in English? And so it, then it turns into like lessons and, you know, yeah. you can, you can create all of this stuff from it, but it's, it came from not being afraid of saying, I don't know how to say that. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, like, so like well, let's work together and figure it out. Cause I don't, nice. I don't know. Well, sure. The, I have a student uh, who has to report to the headquarters in Germany and actually she has to explain taxation. <laughs> Brazilian taxation in English and it's like uh, it's an absurd thing even for us right so and I tried to find something like um, an article written by Brazilians and their lawyers though they really knew what they were talking about and they were trying to explain using like simple language okay what is that in comparison and it was nice she really enjoyed and say okay sometimes it's a mix of yeah, language you should use vocab but also some communicative yes skills like how are you going to simplify that you give examples how you can anticipate um anticipate some questions they can yeah ask you so this is that this is a communicative process it is not like uh, something so rigid it's like yeah you are negotiating and you're talking this is something that i saw that she needed to to work on this more this negotiation yes uh part and also, um, these students, they, they come with lots of language from the area, yeah? So I think they want to, to feel more confident in speaking, probably because of pronunciation and some grammar, yes, stuff. And so we have to help them with some grammar, especially advanced grammar. And pronunciation, they feel very insecure because they are not natives, because of accent, and you have to say no. Most of people, they are, they are like you. We are in the same boat. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Yes, you're communicating. You are doing a great job. You're getting across your idea. So, and um, it's a process. And I feel very glad. For me, it's like a mission because I see like um, people who are not so good in good positions because they have English, they have this skill. And people who are amazing, excellent, yes, yeah, not there because of English. So when you can, you know, join these two things and people are there, it's like, okay, this is the perfect world. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, and it's a matter of just go there. And I think it's consistency as you have to do that again, repetition and okay, a presentation let's present again let's work on that with my students i'm speaking too much as you can tell <laughs> no no I was, I was just gonna ask you with the presentations and stuff because the one of the things that we did want to talk about was how do you like an ex examples one or or more of how you help your business students and we can obviously i have examples too <laughs> like what we do in terms of preparation because sometimes we have to obviously build the language they have to have the language as a basis but then beyond that a lot of the business english class environment is actually training it's it, it's exactly. not a, it, it's a language class but then it turns into mm -hmm. training as well and so it, it, it we, we're constantly kind of 
balancing between is or do we have to focus on language right now or do i have to focus on on training them in communication and delivery and and being able to work with people and all of those other soft skills that 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 kind of go into the the yeah. work factor true true yeah i made a lot of mistakes in this area i, I start with students okay let's um approach this top this grammar topic and by the end okay are they going to use this so i especially for presentations i saw that they really need to practice so i decided to to propose them okay prepare something we are going to record it yeah so uh i record the presentations and ask students uh, and i give like positive feedback afterwards like it was good the structure the the these expressions you use and i sent students this recording and uh they i, I encourage them to to watch it because they can i don't know have their own conclusions but i watch it too for, for me it's extra work but it's it worth so i watch it and i, I really prepare detailed feedback so with things about structure about um the slide etc but mainly about language so for example grammar things good things things that we can improve and vocabulary pronunciation and we have uh data we have material to work on next class so for example they i see that they have problems with simple present so i can for example work with this topic which is meaningful it's something that the student really needs to work on. Or I see on a daily basis that, for example, students uh, struggle with word formation. Yes, to, to yes, choose like the adjective or the adverb, so we can work on the word formation as well. And um, I think it's a good way, uh, and they can compare the recordings and see improvement. So they, they normally tell me, oh my God, is the first one was horrible now yes uh, it's better i could speak like pronounce this word correctly and also when i work with job interviews i do the same i was with a, a girl these days we had like uh, six classes and she compared like wow so the first one i was totally lost i don't know what to say now yes i have a train of thought and i can pronounce this correctly so it's something that um they have you, you have something to assess i think uh, um the metric i don't know and it, it's something that is like um working well in with my students and i do this with intermediate or more advanced students and this is a kind of flagship in my in my work so i i think it, it's nice because you work with preparation so i incentivize uh encourage them to to think about the words they should use to prepare uh we do something during and after uh, kind of post yes uh, work because we tend to say okay i presented it's over but it's not over let's work on that can you watch yourself i know it's horrible to watch ourselves i hate it <laughs> uh, but do it and let's work on that and work on what you need and i think this is the the magic about working with skills and business and these things that are very practical yes that we, we can choose and you don't have like a oh, vague thing to work with like a, a book uh, and people don't know what they're doing so yeah recording something that i i, I like very much i do that with my students too they hate watching it hate it <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to hate it they, they yeah. don't like it but it's really useful because it, it's like well this for for me it's quite useful because there's oftentimes I, i'll send recorded messages uh to friends or colleagues and sometimes i have to speak in portuguese and then i'll play it back to myself i'm like oh that is not how i sounded in my head at all i i'm in my head i'm pronouncing that word right i know how to say that word but what comes out is something completely different so then i realized like the the value in being able to record things and being able to to watch yourself back because sometimes what you think is coming out is actually not what's coming out mm. um so it's not as clear or it's um you have intelligibility problems and sometimes it's language but then sometimes it's also uh like you said like going back to like storytelling or having a clear concept and logical mm -hmm. process and being able to you know step by step describe something for example uh so recording is, is quite a good tip um i you were talking about interviews i had oh okay so i was i was preparing a student recently for an interview and she's going to a bunch of headhunters and you know she's looking for a new position and she um she went to an interview and 
we had been practicing and she was good. She felt confident. And as soon as she got to the interview, she just got blocked. The reason was the in the person that was doing the interview was extremely hostile towards her. And he started the interview with her saying that the human resources is uh, mandating uh, quotas. And so he's only he's only allowed to hire women. Oh. So, OK, so you can imagine this situation, right? And I was like, oh, God, <laughs> and how did you respond? You know, and so then I'm sitting there like edge of my seat trying to figure out what's going on with her. And she said, well, I, I didn't really know what to do because he was extremely aggressive. And the way that he was describing the job position to me and the way that he was asking me questions, it was very clear that he did not want me on his team because he kept saying things that were extremely negative and that it was the job is overwhelming and you're going to have to have, you know, birth by fire, hit the ground running, you're no training, you're in charge of everything. And um, it's supposed to be a team of three, but it's just you. And so he was being really negative about the job position because he had been, I think, backed into a corner by his, his company and, you know, he had other issues with whatever. Um, and so, and I was like, well, how did you handle that situation? Because yeah. I actually have never had a client come to me and say, the person that was interviewing me was trying to talk me out of the job. Yeah. It's, right? And so she, I felt so bad for her. And I was like, I'm so sorry you had that experience. I mean, it must have been awful. But then I thought to myself, I was like, well, there's going to be hostile exchanges or aggressive slightly aggressive or domineering exchanges i was like well that's something that maybe i should work on with her because who knows she might encounter that in the future again uh and so and that has nothing to do with necessarily english language it has everything to do with you know trying to respond to the scenario with the appropriate language so it, it turned into like this whole this whole series of of classes where we talked about you know how to kind of uh, manage your stress and and um, adapt your your language to have like a, a softer and non confrontational tone and and you know lang functional language that she could use it and I I had never encountered that before. Yeah, this is <laughs> good. My whole know. career, yeah. I was like, okay. Here we go. This was bad for her, of course, but it is good for us to, to have this kind of experience because we understand how things work right now. Because when I work with a student client, I always ask afterwards, okay, what was asked? Because I'd like to know, because sometimes we tend to think that uh, the questions will be, what are your strengths and weaknesses? So they don't ask these things anymore. They want to know sometimes about your life. And one student said, okay, they asked me about my personal life. And each day more, I'm seeing my work that I need to work on small talk. I want to continue talking about oil and gas, but I need small talk if they ask me about, I don't know, vaccine, like it was some months ago. I don't know what to say and politics and... Um, Yes, and you start to see how things really work, and okay, but I like this tip uh, um, because they tend to say, "Teacher, maybe uh, I, 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 yes, I expect to to be, yes, um, th this interview can be like a wonderful with a wonderful person like you, and sometimes it's not. Sometimes you're going to, yeah, be faced with a situation like that, a person, <laughs> yeah, trying to, yeah, to date and down to you, yeah, it's like, <laughs> oh my God, no, yeah, yeah. Well, you just never know the 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 things that they're going to encounter i mean this person because he clearly stated that he was against whatever policy that the the company was implementing i don't know i didn't really get into it um but he you know he was having a bad day and he was not in a good mood mm -hmm. and and she had to deal with that situation in a professional way and so how do you handle yourself professionally speaking in another language that you're not necessarily comfortable in doing. And and by the way, the whole interview scenario is a very plastic and, and, and unrealistic yeah. dynamic between two people. So on top of that, you know, she just, she was really thrown and she said, you know, I did the best that I can, but I just, I don't have a lot of high hopes for the position. I said, yeah, I don't, I don't think you're gonna get, but I don't think it was because of the interview. I think it was because of other things that were going on. Um, but you, you mentioned small talk and that, that has been coming 
more and more prevalent in everything that I've been doing in that people are more focused on building relationships and being able to uh, maintain proper rapport, you know, amongst their coworkers. Um, because as everything is kind of going, trending to go digital and things like that, people are kind of working autonomous, autonomously and doing their, mm -hmm. their projects. And, and really the only interaction they have in business is maintaining some sort of relationship, even if it's negotiating prices on, mm -hmm. with the salespeople. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's a real conundrum right now. Yes, and uh, I'm seeing that we need to work with other things like that. For example, you are talking about being ready for these uh, predictable situations. I have a class that I prepared that is the name, yes, to work with these kind of unpredictable things. So I, I present students with some, like, uh, I introduce some topics and they have to talk about it. It is in inspired in the C2 proficiency speaking test. You know, you have like, a question and topics and you have to talk uh, for two minutes about it and also talk about pictures sometimes they need to practice these okay if you are asked something they're not expecting how you're going to behave you're like in a small talk you don't know what you're going to yeah to to be brought up and you, you should be ready maybe you don't know all the topics but you know you have to know how to yes manage this situation so lots of things involved yes and normally these students the students of monday they have the language they don't maybe don't have like advanced language they don't know like if clauses yeah mixed conditions whatever but they know what they need but these things like yes uh, uh establish rapport yes and um yeah being with people from different countries with different cultures these are things that really concern them and i, I think these are topics that we should approach and be yes really uh concerned about because yeah, I, I had the, I think a lot of people have the feeling that business English is very formal English and it's very mm. dry and it, it's talking about, you know, terminology and, you know, the, the business vernacular that we have. And that's really not this the scenario. And I see more and more, especially as everything's becoming globalized, you know, the pandemic certainly mm. helped with things going online and a lot of things going virtual. And there's a lot of people who are working from home you know, part of their week or whatever. Um, and so the the communication that's happening is computer mediated communication, right? It's all going through the computer and it's through emails and Slack messages and instant messages mm -hmm. and things like that. And it's super, super informal. And it's something that I don't think that, um, well, currently, I don't think course books are really attending to because they have the the very formal reports and the very formal business letters and the the meeting notes and things like that and the dynamic because it's well I can't I can't blame <laughs> the publishing companies because for them to, to to keep up to date with all of the new trends it's going yeah. to be uh, nearly impossible but at the same time we're we're starting to see that at least business english teachers are should be seeing that the the mode of communication is changing mm -hmm. and the genre is changing the registers are much different than they were before um and we have a boom especially when we have economic recessions or depressions we have a boom in st small startup companies that you know business owners and entrepreneurs are bootstrapping everything and so it's quite an informal very very informal atmosphere and in in a lot of times especially with small startups and things like that because it's so small they they have very intimate relationships with one another and it's all about building relationships it's all about building rapport and it's all about really efficient communication which is much different than what people's normal impression is especially even our clients even business english clients they come in do you ever have to have that conversation with them like well what do you actually do at work yes because they have this they have a vision right like it has to be formal yes absolutely we have all to ask and uh you were talking about that about um things that go beyond the formal language if this student he's going to to travel yes um the business trip 
And he said, okay, I was having lunch these days with the guys from different countries and we are talking about food. I don't know to talk about food. So I need, I need to know this simple and basic language, right? And uh, it's something that I'm starting to realize as teachers, we tend to, yes, go formal, like, okay, as you said, work with reports, uh, emails, how to say this, this and that. But I was with two students actually, they want to get like new job and etc. They're not like in the calm, big company. But we started the class talking about um, one of them asking me about a song, uh, the, the part of the lyrics that he could understand. And uh, we tried to yeah talk about that and some grammar stuff. And afterwards, I realized that the class would become like uh, yes, a class about music, not about only about music, but interpreting the lyrics and talking about grammar. And uh, sometimes we, we should allow ourselves to do something a little bit different, yes, to a little bit escape from that. And um, I think everything is connected because the word is more than the things that we should do. It's about the human factor all the time. It's about communication. Yes, and uh, yeah, this is kind of interesting, something that I, I'm still thinking about. I, I'm, yeah, I, I, I need to understand some aspects of these but I, I will start to work with other things uh that are not like uh would be like the core you know uh the things that we used to work in business and um trying to understand we are in a transition time right people like hybrid work as you said global teams yeah you're working from home and you're talking with an indian you're like canadian and uh things are totally different right now and we should allow ourselves this time to to understand this transition time um, yeah it, i mean it's not it's not that anybody's doing it wrong it's just that things change and then yeah. as they change we're trying to figure out okay so what does this actually mean for us and like and and what does it mean for our students i had a, mm. a, a student recently that he went um to uh, ohio of all places in the u.s i don't know they had a big trade fair there it was like ohio they couldn't pick like a, a nicer <laughs> anyways i was like oh, you're going to cleveland like that's such a random city to go to anyway so he was excited though because he got to go see the the cavaliers the the nba team okay and and so i was like oh yeah you should go you know like check out a game and they, you can go and do a couple you can do a few things there uh it's you know a big city and check out you know the burger joints and the usual stuff that you do on a business trip when you're stuck in a hotel and you just kind of want to get out and, and see the sites, I guess. And so uh, he invited a couple of colleagues and he said, oh, well, I'm going to go to the game. Does anybody want to go to the game? Yeah, you should go because it's, first of all, it's like an event and it's something like culturally speaking, it's, a, it's quite interesting to go to. And he had never been to an NBA game before, so it's, it's like encouraged him. And when they got there, he said it was very uncomfortable, not because of the game. And, and thank God they went to a game and not to a restaurant, because what happened was, was they, they didn't know what to say to each other. So they got right. So they're watching the game. So they go, they go they're like, oh, I'm going to go to get a beer. Do you want to, you know, pizza, pretzel, whatever, you know, they're kind of getting food. Left. Yeah, they're kind of, you know, just <laughs> eating mindlessly and like sitting down and watching the thing. But then as the game progresses, there's halftime and they have a halftime show. But then there there are periods of time where there's nothing to do. And usually people kind of turn to your who, whomever you're sitting with and and you have a conversation like, oh, did you do you usually watch basketball? Do you, do, do, you know, how's your family? What's it like? Because they're all from different places and none of them had anything to say. And he said it was it was very awkward. Um, and it was good that there was something to watch because if they were at a restaurant, it would just been a silent dinner <laughs> or people <laughs> on cell phones. And I told him, I was like, yeah, you, you, small talk. You have to, you have to chat about the weather. I don't know to talk about your, <laughs> like, did you see the new car that's coming out or like to compare something of your culture or to like, I'm not used to this. We usually don't have pizza served in stadiums, watching sports matches when, you know, they and they couldn't do it it was very it was very bizarre for him so then i was like this is the reason that we have to start like looking at the scenarios that our students actually are getting into which is very mm -hmm. different from what yeah. the court necessarily the course i'm not saying anything is wrong with the course books but that doesn't represent real real situations all of the time 
yeah we forgot how to interact i think yes <laughs> as well uh is this a uh, yeah broaden uh um uh conversation i think or oh, we hate the ordinary i don't know these kind of simple things as asking about weather yeah i was thinking about that today but it's a philosophical <laughs> oh no you feel <laughs> philosophical <laughs> <laughs> but yes and uh yeah especially after pandemic uh, yes everything changes uh, people are having trouble to yes um even to make friends i was reading about that yes and i was reading about teenagers and well, not teenagers but young adults yes who are uh, like uh, starting their professional lives and they don't have these conversation like look at the eye because they're starting having like a uh, remote work and hybrid work so this isn't your thing so you don't have a person there to to talk during the like you know coffee time yes yeah, it's a new perspective and a new like have a behavior this is something to study to to pay attention to it's going to impact in all the interactions yes and yeah it's kind of interesting it is interesting but i had i have an uh a student and she's she's quite she, uh, she's a really good professional she's really really good at her job um and she's um uh technical salesperson for a huge international my dog is making a nest <laughs> over here i don't know if you can hear the scratching she's creating a, a bed for herself um so she's a, like a I think she's like a big country manager for a chemical company, technical sales. Okay. And so she was, you know, go, she's in line to be, a, well, she's a country manager, then the Latin America, and then possibly, you know, like manager, director, like she's in line to, to, to be promoted quite quickly. She's been growing really, really fast in the company. Anyways, her, when she was up for this promotion, one of the the directors told her which would be her immediate boss because he would be the vp and then she would be replacing he said you need to start having coffee with your colleagues because she's a very like goal oriented very mm. you know she she goes to work she works and she she just stays there and she doesn't really interact with her colleagues no oh sorry and <laughs> because she'll just keep digging uh it'll bother me um and she so she doesn't really interact with her colleagues that much and it was creating um an not <laughs> subpar or not optimal group dynamic mm -hmm. because the other people would not say negative things towards her but they wouldn't work as a team because whenever they got up they said oh do you want to have coffee with us she's like no no thanks mm. because she doesn't drink coffee and she never saw the value of interacting with her teammates and then what happened was the director said you have to start interacting with people because if you want to move into managerial positions you're going to have to start dealing with people and dealing with people is communicating and dealing with relationships. And she didn't see the value in it because she was so focused on the technical part of her job. And so that this sometimes I think that translates too. Like we see people and it's like, yeah, you have to be a kind of a human. You can't be a robot. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Yes, it's very interesting. Yes, this uh, for sure. It's yeah. They they have to work uh, with lots of things in companies, right? Uh, lots of students say, okay, I, I I yes, I waste a lot of time like in meetings. Yes, we could have like. I don't know, this, this meeting like could have been, I don't know, an email or something like that. And it's the new reality. So to, to really ponder, yes, uh, what is necessary, what is not, is really important. And in this case, well, yeah, soft skills, yes, is something that we need to work with students too. And yes, I totally agree. You're talking about your dog, don't worry. I, I'm uh, kind of distracted here because I don't know if I look at here in this screen, look at you or my other <laughs> camera. And I say, okay, during this record, it's going to be a mess. I'm going to be like that. <laughs> I revenge for my students. I will watch myself and see how this is hard. Right? <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. Yeah. I mean, this is like the, the homemade podcast where I have the dog in the background, you know, the, the trucks going by at the beginning. It's just, that's a, that's how it is. It's, it's very relaxed anyways. Yeah, no, it, it is an interesting dynamic. And I think soft skills are the things that, that companies are starting to look for more and more. And they're starting to demand more soft skills on their their job requirements, the vacancies that they put out in the postings. And uh, because technical skills can be trained very easily. 
Yeah. We can give you hard skills. We can give you technical skills. But soft skills are things that have to be developed over time. And the people who seem to be, at least from the people, the clients that I work with, the seem that are rising and kind of flourishing in their jobs are the people that have really, really honed their soft skills and they're good at working with people and they understand the value of communication. Do you see the same thing with your with your students as well, with your clients or? Have you yeah. seen the, the change of like, well, the people who are kind of succeeding are the ones that know how to deal with people. And then, you know, the technical stuff they can learn after. Yes, yes. And the ones who are willing to expose themselves. I don't know these. Yes, this is something that will like take a while for me to get used to. Yes. And but I will do that, especially about presenting, for example. Yes. But yeah, it's something that I see more and more and they ask me when i for example have a feedback by the end of the semester what would like to work on and they say oh soft skills i need to to work on confidence and uh, negotiating yes and talking to clients and, and when you they start talking about their stories and you see okay it's more than the language all the time yes it's like understanding people and how to ask and we are always working with these yes how can you ask for clarification yes uh, how can you yes interact in a way that sounds more like natural not invasive not rude and we are always yes coming in this direction of human factor yes and the relationship Yes, this is this is uh, what I see too. Yes, absolutely. Because the hard skills they can do for themselves, as you said. Yes, they like take courses, they self study, they come to us to help them to understand, actually understand what is going on. Yes, in this world and how English, yeah, is necessary. And you are discovering things together. Actually, this is uh, very nice. Actually, I think it's a uh, it's a, uh, a good part of our jobs. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think so too. It's it's very rewarding to see when they when they are flourishing and they're you know being successful. But at the same time, we have to start thinking about what they're actually doing. There's a lot of preconceived notions about, especially the business English area, which is you know our connection is the business English area, and we see mm -hmm. people saying things and 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 saying that you know well first that business is boring, which is not. <laughs> I mean, business is all around us. Is how we. It's how we're, it's how you have your cell phone, how you're consuming a podcast, how you're, you know, everything that business is business, but um, that it's very dry. And really it's not because business is about making relationships and developing those relationships and it's with people. And so uh, I think it's quite, it's quite the opposite of being a very dry topic. You have to understand how to navigate those situations. And if you don't know how to do that, you're not going to be very successful in your job at least yeah. from what I see. Yes, and even we, we are talking about oil and gas, for example, which can be a very boring topic. We, we started like talking about history, about other things, and I really like to include some debates and philosophical things and uh, make people reflect because it's about that too, yes? Because you thrive as a person if you have something to say and something that goes beyond, I don't know, your area of expertise. So I think it's our job to, yes, one of the skills that I have to master is that to, to have the ability to think and to think and express this in a second language. Wow, this is a great skill. <laughs> and yeah, this is a part of the class that I like very much and students normally like it too. And they feel glad maybe stop talking about <laughs> their technical part and to go to something related, but I don't know, um, more, I don't know, something that is is more part of their reality. And more challenging too, you yeah, know, they have to think about, it's creative, they have to, and, and the surprising thing is, and it's kind of wrapping us back up to where we started, is that you, you know, you started in journal, well, you, a little bit in English teaching, but then in journalism and, and it was kind of, we'll put quote unquote unrelated, but the unrelated inspired and you could find the connections. Um, I've talked to a lot of people recently and there's people that come from varied backgrounds, um, physics and mathematics and engineering and, and you know, chemistry and the sciences, which is, you know, sciences and arts are, are usually at odds with each other. And it's fascinating because every single person that I've talked to that has become an educator or moved into ELT, regardless of where they were before, they found connections because something 
kind of the ideas or the, you know the genesis of the creation of, of, of thinking of things they've, they've been able to make these these connections so it's not it's not useless i would say if you're you're talking about something more philosophical because it gets the person thinking and relating their ideas and then obviously relating to other people too yeah something that journalism taught me was to to be okay uh about not understanding things because i mean let me rephrase myself for example uh if you take a while to understand and ask questions this is good actually this is the journalism yes uh thing you have to ask 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 and understand it you should be able to uh express and, and talk about it in different ways to really reach your audience so you cannot understand partially yes you have to really go deeper and be able to uh, express these in a more uh, detailed way and also simplified way depending on the, the newspaper you're working uh, uh, for so uh, now as a teacher uh, I feel that that I can ask questions I can have this face you know I can understand because and I tell my students it's a kind of joke if you can explain that to me and I can understand you everybody's going to understand yes because now yeah i, I, I really feel the need to, to to go deeper and i'm not afraid of asking them and it's something about communication that is is really important yes i, I think um they should uh convey their ideas clearly and sometimes it's difficult yes and not all the time they're going to be with experts sometimes they're going to be in a kind of meeting with people from other areas they should be able to yes be clear and to i don't know create metaphors and comparisons and i think this is a part of communication that maybe i can help them with <laughs> i am positive that you are probably helping them with that because i think it, yeah no because i think it's a it's a cool perspective it's a different it's a different way of looking at it it's a different approach and you know we like i i said in the beginning sometimes we get very um, wrapped up in the minutia of, of teaching the language and all the details of the language, which we're not discounting, of course. I mean, that's clearly the yeah. the basis of the communication. But at the same time, we have to be able to zoom in, zoom out, uh, and 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 kind of be able to do that for our students as well, and uh, allow them to to develop that ability of okay. Sometimes I have to be really focused on developing my proficiency and looking at things. Um, from a technical point of view, but then also being able to kind of zoom out and and looking at the connections that we can make and how we can uh, discuss ideas and 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 collaborate with other people. So, wow, well, yeah. yeah, this is the beauty of the word. Yes, to have references <laughs> yeah. and connect ideas this is the base of creativity. So, uh, yeah, I love that. So when we learn from different areas, this is communication. This is journalism too. This is the part that I like. So uh, yes, now I can join these two worlds and uh, and see students see the the benefit of it too. This is very rewarding to me. Very cool. Well, I want to thank you because we've been here for almost an hour. Yes, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Thank you so much. Uh, so and patience. You're, <laughs> and you're amazing. welcome back anytime. And of course, we'll mm -hmm. include your social media contacts in the show notes. Mm -hmm. So if anybody wants to get in touch with you, then they're more than welcome to, to have a chat. And, and hopefully we can connect more ideas and distill some some concepts down for for ourselves in the future. Uh, any? Do you have any other comments that you want to make before we go? I'd like to thank you. It was amazing. It was like, oh my God, what am I going to say? And you're so <laughs> kind as yes, with all your guests. And yeah, people have fun and can share many perspectives. So I'm grateful. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you very much. Thank oh, you. Oh, well, it was wonderful talking to you. And I think that's it for this episode. And of course, you can come back if you have any other insights and you want to share some tips Pleasure. and tricks. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. A pleasure. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Bye, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Real Talk and ELT. Want to join the conversation? Head on over to Instagram at Kelly Peddington ELT and send me a message. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube or Spotify channel to stay up to date. And of course, take care of yourself, your health, your vibe, and your tribe. Until next time.